Thanks everyone for joining us today. It's um, fantastic that you've taken time out of your day to join us. We've received an incredibly positive response to the webinar series that we've been hosting with our senior leaders and subject matter experts where they share their knowledge and insights. These sessions are being recorded and they are being shared with um, both the local and international um, representatives who are interested in the business model. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Keegan Vivian Greer. Keegan's a director of orchestra um, responsible for their sales. Orchestra is New Zealand's largest provider of shareholder registry and stakeholder management solutions. The business pro provides services across the full spectrum of cooperative registry and engagement needs, including employee share schemes, secondary market events, dividend allocation modules, and investor portals. They work with cooperatives of all sizes. Keegan has an international background in business management and sales across a variety of industries, including technology, tourism, imports and exports. Since joining Orchestra's team, he's helped hundreds of New Zealand companies streamline their manual equity processes. Keegan enjoys being at the coalface, learning about what makes companies tick and working on solutions to make their systems more efficient. So today, um, Keegan's going to discuss efficient membership engagement and management of complex shareholder registries via cloud-based platforms and delve into how you can enhance your cooperative transparency with members access to documentation and communications. Transparency and engagement are all crucial components of cooperatives, so I'm really looking forward to this discussion. And um, yeah, as I, as I go through my time in this role, I'm very aware that that whole membership engagement piece is absolutely key for all of you and your senior leadership and governance roles. So Keegan will share examples of New Zealand cooperatives who are currently doing this successfully. So there should be some really great takeaways for you all to go and implement in your own organisations. Um, as I said, we'd like to make the session interactive, so please do use the Q&A or the chat function. And if at the end, when we open up the floor to Q&A and you want to actually speak, just um, put, raise your hand on the, um, on the bottom of your screen, you've got that option, and I can um, enable you to speak to the group. Um, so we will now hand over to Keegan. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Roz, and um, thank you for that lovely introduction as well. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a, a little while, and it sounds like we've got quite a few people um, who, are, who are joining us today from across the country. I hope those of you that are outside of Auckland are enjoying your liberties. Um, yes, so Orchestra, we, we're, um, we're an equity management software, so we've, we've been around um, for a little while now. Um, we, we are New Zealand's leading um, software in this, in this industry, so um, lots of companies using our software, lots of cooperatives using our software. Um, and quite early on, we, we recognized that cooperatives did represent a, an interesting um, opportunity for us. Obviously, um, given the nature of cooperatives, there are a number of um, members which are involved. And usually, um, there's, there's quite a deep history um, and, and quite a lot of um, a, a transactional history too, including share issuance, um, dividend payments, and and of course, a lot, a lot of communications too. So uh, what I'll do is, is I will share my screen um, and I'll, I'll go through a couple of slides that I've prepared. Um, and then after that, what we'll do is we'll jump into um, Orchestra itself and I'll run you through a wee bit of a demo. So uh, bear with me and I will share my screen. So yes, Orchestra, uh, we, we help streamline cooperative share registry obligations um, and one of the, the core things that we try to do is increase member engagement. So um, obviously the basics of company compliance is something that Orchestra is deeply involved in. Um, all registered companies within New Zealand, they have to keep um, you know, a minimum, minimum standard of reporting um, and they have to um, meet the Companies Act 1993. So once registered, cooperative companies have a number of obligations that they need to meet. Uh, I'm sure most of you would be aware of these obligations. Um, and if those obligations are not met, then obviously the companies and directors can be fined. So the importance of share registers, share registers, I should say, all cooperatives must maintain an up-to-date up share register. Um, and a share register is the, uh, it's the official record of who owns what in a cooperative, uh, the number of shares um, and types of shares that every member um, Owns. And so that, that may include uh, multiple different share classes. Um, and within those share classes, there may be 
uh, different considerations, whether they're preferential um, share classes, whether they have trading restrictions, and whether they have voting rights. Uh, the details and dates of any repurchases and, and redemption of shares. So um, that, that all needs to be tracked for up to 10 years. Um, and the, yeah, the details of any transfer of shares to and from shareholders as well. So all of this data is, is, um, is needed to be compliant with the Companies Act 1993 and Orchestra helps you do that. Uh, so why shouldn't you delay sorting out your compliance? Well, I'm sure most of you already have a, a pretty decent uh, grasp on your compliance needs. Um, issues with incorrect data, what we have found is that it will only compound. So a good example of this is um, if you're keeping all of your data in an Excel spreadsheet and three, four, five years ago, you put a decimal place in, in, the, in the wrong place, well, that can affect all data ongoing from there. So um, it's good to avoid the embarrassment of having either data missing or incorrect data, um, especially at the time of a major event, whether that's an audit or uh, some, some sort of event which um, opens up the books to an external party. Um, the conversations that I've had with uh, cooperatives that are using Orchestra is that their systems can quickly become out of date. So one of the main reasons for this is because uh, systems and processes are handed from finance manager to finance manager or whoever manages this within a cooperative. Uh, and sometimes those systems are built so that um, only the creator understands how they, they actually work. So having a system like Orchestra means that um, it's all in one place, um, it's, it's all understood, uh, and you don't have to be a genius to work it out. So um, done in the right way, share registers is, <clears throat> can help you engage with, um, with your shareholders as well. And that's, that's really one of the core functionalities of Orchestra is, is creating a, a better relationship between cooperatives themselves and the members within that cooperative. Uh, so uh, using a streamlined register to engage members through Orchestra, we allow um, consistent and transparent communication. So the members are actively engaged in what's going on within the cooperative. Um, it does provide a professional image or a professional impression uh, for prospective members as well. So I'll show you how we can, we can tackle that. And of course, use, using a system like Orchestra will save you time and money in, in the long and short term, particularly when it comes to manual processes. So Orchestra, where do we fit into the picture? Well, Orchestra, we are fully integrated with the New Zealand Companies Office. So what that means is we act both as your external share register and anything that you update within Orchestra feeds through to the Companies Office through an API. Um, so, uh, you know, one, one of the things that we noticed really early on was that there was this massive inefficiency. You had to maintain two sets of data, um, and of course that opens you up to all sorts of margin of error. So, um, we've been designed really to work alongside all of co-op stakeholders. Um, it's all cloud-based, data isn't going anywhere. Um, we've introduced document signing, so really good for things like um, member resolutions or agreements. Um, and of course, under the, the member engagement uh, module, there is um, individual access for each member of a, of a co-op where they can jump on and view different bits of information. Um, you can share documents with, with all members or, or individual members if you choose to do so. And of course, there's communication tools as well. One of the things that um, does represent a, a, real, a real opportunity for co-ops within New Zealand is our secondary market um, tool. So this is where we invite members um, to, to participate in a secondary market event where they can buy and sell shares. And we can talk a little bit more about that if you're keen to, keen to take a look. So uh, how does Orchestra work for cooperatives? We keep accurate records. Um, there's transaction management, particularly for those co-ops that have a long history. Um, secure document vault, um, so this is just a place to keep all, all the key company bits and pieces like constitutions and agreements. Um, there are, of course, communications involved with Orchestra, and we do have deep reporting tools. Um, in terms of dividend payouts, we have streamlined the process as well, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, now, we do have a number of um, co-ops that are using Orchestra to their benefit, um, and we, we went down and asked them you know, why they chose Orchestra, these are a couple of the key points. So compliance savings, um, the fact that all of these tools are all in one place, so document storage, communications, and dividends. Um, 
you know the fact that they they do um, they they no longer have to update two sets of data with the New Zealand Companies Office integration, and we do have uh, a service team which is world class, second to none. Um, so not only for the cooperatives themselves, but also for the members too. Um, and we also also just have a nice little quote from our friends over at Walnuts New Zealand, um, who have been using the platform for around six months now. Uh, so they found Orchestra intuitive to use, which is is what is exactly what we're trying to um, to achieve. And where, where they have need to ask questions, they've received quick and helpful response responses. The initial transfer of our old spreadsheet based share register into the orchestra system is fast and painless. So it's a very nice thing for them to say about us and we appreciate it. So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll jump quickly into um, orchestra itself, um, where we will We'll take a wee bit of a look at how it works um, and and of course if you do have any questions as as Ross said just um, just jot it down and I'll be happy to, to answer uh, those at the end. So this is orchestra um, and the, the way that we have designed it uh, is that effectively there's two sides to orchestra. So there's the side that you would see if you were a member within a co cooperative so that's this top entry point um, and what I, what I mean by that is that each individual member can access um, individual shareholdings, individual communications and individual documents. They're never going to be able to see information which is not relevant to them, um, only going to be able to see uh, their own info. So that's this top entry point. Now this bottom entry point, that would take you to the side that a cooperative would see. So whether you're the finance manager, uh, whether you're the, the, the office um, administrator, you can have access to this this bottom entry point so this is really the engine room so this is where cooperatives can come in and they can take a look at all of these key bits of information so at the home page they get a um a couple of quick links um so they can they can track their share register communications document bulk and of course their share load shareholders too now as i touched on um we do act as your external share register and as such you can jump into to take a look at it where you get a couple of key bits of information so firstly you get your total shareholder count um, you get your number of shares that have been issued um, and then you can come down and take a look at these two graphics so the one on the left this represents um, funding rounds so whether that's a share issuance um, i know a lot of the cops that we work with like to issue shares annually um, so we we build that in and it's just a way for a cooperative to be able to to track how the the equity within the co-op um, changes over time. Um, same thing for something like a share split, if that was necessary, we can build that in, no problems. Uh, and then this graphic on the right is for share class. So uh, one, of, one of the examples that I like to use is primary wool co-op. They, they've been with us for quite some time now. They're um, a little bit more complicated than most. Um, they have 11 share classes. Um, and so what we've done, each, each share class has, has different um, rules around it. So we've built in their 11 share classes um, and the benefit of that is that they can jump on and see what how much um, equity within the co-op that share class uh, represents too. Now then you can come into your shareholders. So these are the, the members themselves and you get a list of uh, all, all uh, your members here uh, from uh, the highest percentage of equity all the way down to the lowest. Now you can, you can jump in and edit information against each individual member. So if, if you needed to update their registered address, that would feed through to, company, to the company's office. Um, equally, if a, uh, a member had multiple parties, so if it was a trust as an example, you can, you can have um, direct parties attached to that share parcel. So let's say there is a orch an orchard which um, is owned by a husband and wife two different parties, both of those parties can have access to that one share parcel um, through orchestra and you can add in multiple parties here. Equally, um, for each individual shareholder, you can hold notes against them. Um, so there's two ways that we, um, that we approach this. The first one is this top box. So if you wanted to drop a note in this top box, that's a note that an individual shareholder will be able to see when they log in. So I've given the example of grow a member number. Um, so if, if uh, your members wanted to jump in and take a look at that, only, them, only, only that one in, uh, shareholder is going to be able to view it. Uh, the other way that we can do it is in this bottom box, and, and this is for um, administrators. So this is for you guys as, 
as the, uh, the finance managers and, and, and uh, leaders of governance within the co-ops. You can track notes against individual shareholders. So whether you wanted to hold IRD numbers against them, whether you wanted to hold phone numbers against them and uh, the shareholders themselves, the members themselves, they're not gonna be able to see this information. Um, that's just for you guys um, for internal uh, processes. Keegan, now, um, yes. I just, sorry to interrupt. We've got a question here. Yes, sure, um, go from for Janet it. Janet Henderson from ProCare. She's asked, we have shares held by both entities and individuals within the entity. How would they be able to view that information by entity? So the, as I understand it, that you might have one individual that holds two different share parcels under different uh, entities. Is that correct? Uh, I'll just um, see if Janet can give us a response to that. I think that I think that that's that may be what Janet's asking. Um, and if it is, then uh, the answer would be that, uh, firstly, from a company's perspective, let's say Catherine Chapman is one of the trustees within um, this trust here, then Catherine would have access to both um, this top share parcel, but she'd also have um, access to this bottom share parcel as well. Um, and I'll show you what that would look like for her in just a second. Now, um, I will come back to that, but moving on, um, there are a couple of different reports which cooperatives can download. So the first one is a full register. Um, so in effect, that's a capital table. Now, um, what you can do is you can track back um, and take a look at different dates. So let's say you wanted to see what, um, what the share register looked at looked like on the 15th of June 2021, you can then download that report. So really good for, for taking a historical look, a retrospective look um, at, at, at what the, the cooperative looked like in terms of shareholding. Um, equally, you can download all of the, the data um, on your shareholders as a CSV if you did need to edit, edit that internally, um, as well as a PDF too. Um, and we have um, additionally thrown in a continuity report um, and again, you can you can take a look at that on different dates too. Um, we've added in advanced filters. So if you wanted to um, you wanted to uh, filter this out by address, that's easy enough to do. Equally, if you wanted to um, to build in a custom field, let's say um, a grower member number, then you can you can type that in, and it will show up the, um, the individual shareholder by the co-op's um, grower member number. Now we, we build a transaction history for each co-op that, that uses orchestra. And this is, this is quite a big task. So um, again, using primary wool co-op as an example, they have um, uh, around 900 uh, members. They have 11 share classes and historical data going back 50 years. So um, obviously the transaction history doesn't start when you join orchestra, we grab all of your data to begin with. Um, and we, we go away and we firstly we audit the data make sure it looks the way that it should, and then we upload it so you can jump in and look at uh, look at any transactional history. So whether that's a, a share issuance, a transfer, a cancellation of shares, uh, dating all the way back to the inception of the cooperative. Now we then have the ability to actually do a couple of bits and pieces in orchestra. So this is this is the first um, functioning part of orchestra is, is the way I like to think about it. So you can create a new share issue. So if you had a new member join the, the cooperative, you can issue them new shares. Um, you can transfer uh, shares in between two individuals. A good example of that might be when um, when an orchard uh, changes hand as an, hands as, a, as an example. Um, and then if you have a, a member leave, um, the cooperative for whatever reason, you can cancel their shareholding too. Uh, you can see we've dropped a little note here just to say um, that there is, uh, you know, if, if a cooperative did have a large number of share transactions, um, let's say you, you do an annual share issue, um, we wouldn't expect you to come onto Orchestra and manually create a new share issue for each individual shareholder, each ind individual member. You would just send it across to us in a spreadsheet and we would upload it. So that's part of the service. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a worked example. So if we create a new share issue, um, and let's say we're going to issue shares to a new shareholder, so this might be a new member. Firstly, you get this drop down box where um, you'll be prompted to enter in the details on the new shareholder. So whether they are an individual, whether they are a trust, whether they're a company, 
you then enter in their names, emails. Um, you can you can throw in a, a welcome message if you'd like. Um, and uh, once you've filled in those details, you then fill in the, the share issuing details. So um, types of shares, um, so that's the share class. Um, number of shares, of course, you can put in a share price, but you don't have to. You can put in the date of execution, which can, can be in the past, um, and then any notes against that, that particular transaction. Most companies or cooperatives would upload supporting documents. So a shareholders agreement is a good example of that. And if they were then to click continue, a couple of things would happen. So firstly, uh, within orchestra, the cap table and share registers would both update automatically. Um, the second thing would be that the company's office would update automatically. And the third and final thing would be that that new uh, shareholder or member that we are issuing shares to, they would be given a login to orchestra automatically. Now, you've got the ability to build um, different share classes here. Um, so, you know, you can put in restrictions on, on individual share classes. Equally, if you wanted to build in funding rounds, so this could be something like a, an annual share issuance, you can do that here too. We then come to the dividend side of orchestra. So this is, this is a relatively new development on our side. Um, it's probably been around for six to eight weeks. Um, lots of work that we do want to do on it. Um, and to begin with, what we've done is we've designed a, a tool for cooperatives to be able to calculate and subsequently report on their dividend distribution. So um, again, I'll give you a bit of an example. If we're going to distribute dividends and perhaps we only want to pay one particular share class, let's say the ordinary shareholders, what we can do is we can enter in uh, a total dividend amount, let's say 100k, and it will give you a price per share. If you wanted to do that in reverse and put a price per share in, it'll work out a total dividend amount. Um, you then need to enter in your imputation ratios and withholding tax rates, um, and it'll give you a wee bit of an example calculation. So if I publish that, I'll show you what it might look like. Something along the lines of this. So we we get these, uh, these totals at the top, so the total dividend paid along with the total imputation credits and total tax withheld. And then we can come down and we can take a look at each individual uh, shareholder with both the gross versus net dividend along with those other two components. So there's still a bit of work to be done on the dividend side of things. We've, we've, just, um, we've just started that work. So one of the things that we will be introducing in the near future is um, something that we've been been requested a lot, um, and that's uh, the ability for co-ops to be able to generate dividend statements through orchestra. There's also going to be deeper reporting functionality, um, and there'll be the ability for cooperatives to request information um, relevant to dividend statements from individual shareholders too. Now, um, we do have um, an associates function. This is really handy um, when you want to give access to um, orchestra to someone who is not a formal shareholder. So this could be um, for someone that might have a shareholder's loan um, and you know they're not necessarily going to turn up on the cap table share register or a company's office. What we've done is we've designed a way um, where they are treated as if they were formal shareholders. So they're given access as, as they would as if they were a formal shareholder, they can access communications and documents as well. Um, so really good just for encouraging that engagement, even if um, even if these particular entities or individuals um, are not formal shareholders. A big part of what we are doing at Orchestra, and this is prim primarily being designed for, um, for startups. Um, a, a lot of startups within New Zealand um, are implementing ESOPs, but equally, there is a large number of, um, a large number of, of companies with um, a long history that are very well established, which like to implement um, an ESOP for their employees. So ESOP stands for um, Employee Share Ownership Plans. Within New Zealand, it's, it's, it's not new, but it's, it's becoming more mainstream um, for, for a lot of companies. We've seen plenty of uh, companies within New Zealand implement uh, what they call a, um, an Employee Share Trust, which is a loan to purchase scheme. So that's one, one uh, form of, or one style of ESOP. Another one is a phantom share pool. This is usually reserved for those more established companies which, which like to use um, uh, an ESOP as a method, method to share revenue with their employees. So um, a really good way to be able to track that from a management perspective, but I would argue probably more importantly is the employees that are part of that ESOP are also given 
um, access to orchestra where they can track their individual roles and responsibilities. So it's, it's just about creating better understanding, better visibility. Um, and as a side note, we can help set those up from scratch, um, including the full suite of legal documents too. So if that's of any interest, um, please do get in touch because I would love to hear from you. Um, now the document vault has been uh, with, with us since day one. So this is um, a repository for all of the documents which are relevant to, to a cooperative or company. Um, great place just for you to keep key bits of information like constitutions and shareholders agreements, all the way through to things like quarterly updates. So uh, the obligation with the company's office, of course, um, is to keep all of this data for seven years. Uh, what we've found is that um, particularly when the person who manages this for a cooperative or company leaves the company, or the cooperative, um, this, this, this kind of stuff does go walk about. So Orchestra acts as a single source of truth. Um, you upload your, your uh, documents into, into Orchestra and it's, it's, it's here for you to manage. Um, you do have the ability to share those documents with, um, with uh, your shareholders if you'd like. So if you wanted them to be able to view their quarterly updates, of course, they would be able to do that when they logged in. And then that feeds into the document signing. So this is, this is a great tool, uh, again, relatively new. It's an integration with a software called DocuSign, which is the world's leading um, electronic signing uh, software. And uh, what we've done is we've built a way for companies to be able to upload documents, let's say a share transfer form. Um, within Orchestra, they would assign um, that document to two individuals, uh, those individuals would log in, they would sign it electronically, and then that document, once it had been fully signed, would feed back through to you as a company. Um, so it just controls the flow of documents um, for cooperatives and companies. Really handy tool. Um, now with the communications, I'd say this is probably the most used module on Orchestra. So this is um, this is this is where we start to talk about the value of having engaged members. So um, what you can do with Orchestra is you can build out custom communications. So uh, you might send out something like a, um, the annual general meeting minutes um, and you can throw a nice little picture. So you might put in a logo for your cooperative, um, hyperlinks uh, leading to, to different websites. And of course you can, you can decide who receives the communications with the audience groups. Um, so you may just want to send it out to specific shareholders. You may want to send it out to all shareholders. That's completely up to you. Um, and of course, you can upload documents against that. So that's, that's, that's definitely the most used, um, used function within Orchestra. Um, and it does really create not only um, visibility, but transparency as well. Um, so it keeps those members engaged, make sure that they are abreast of what's going on within the, within the cooperative. Um, and they, they do really like that. And because it is used so much, we've, we've gone one step further um, and we've built what we call an info tile. So these info tiles, these act as little, the way I would think about it is like a little um, notice board. So it's the first thing that a, a shareholder or member would see when they log in. And this is, this is something that we've, um, we've put together. Um, so this is kind of what it would look like. You can see there's an upcoming AGM on the 1st of December. Now you can build these out to say absolutely anything you'd like. So you can put in uh, different titles, descriptions, you can decide when it's published and it just lives right front and center when a shareholder logs in. So um, a really good way to dangle a little bit of information in front of everyone. And I've seen a very diverse set of use cases for this. So um, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder with that one. Now, in terms of admin, um, through orchestra, you can have as many admins as you'd like. We don't charge for that. Um, you can have your, your HR manager, your finance manager, your company secretary, whoever needs to have access to this information, um, you can add them in. So really easy to do. Um, equally, if you wanted to add in, um, an entity to have read-only access, so this might, a good, a good example of that might be a potential, um, a potential member who wants to join a cooperative, um, you can add read-only access where they're going to be able to view everything that I've just shown you. Um, of course, they're not going to be able to change anything. So um, the benefit of that is that it's entirely transparent um, for, for potential members. They can, they can jump in and view past communications. If you uploaded your financials into the document vault, they'd be able to see that. And of course, they would be able to, um, to see what the structure of the cooperative looked like as well. 
Now, one of the things that our cooperatives um, on Orchestra use a lot is, is the custom fields um, capability. So this is where you can request custom information from all your shareholders at once. So we've given the example of bank account number and IRD number. So that's obviously tailored a little bit more towards dividends. Um, but you can request any information that, that you that you choose to. The way that it works is um, if I was a member, I would log in, I would be prompted to enter in my bank account number. Once I have updated that, um, then it would feed back through to you as the admin of the, the cooperative um, where you would be able to export that data as a CSV. So really good for capturing um, information from all your shareholders at once rather than going out to them individually. Now, that's, Keegan, yes. um, I've just had a question which is relevant to what you're discussing right now. Sure. Um, with regards to whether the platform has the ability to carry out um, shareholder identity verification or to manage AML processes. It's a, it's a very good question. Um, there's something that we've, we've talked about internally a lot. Now, Orchestra can act as a way to capture information which is needed for AML processes. Um, and, and we can work with third parties to provide those AML services. However, our intention moving forward is not to become an AML provider. Um, so while it is a really useful tool, you can have people upload all sorts of um, information where you can, you can capture that information and, and pass it on to the relevant parties. We won't be conducting the AML processes ourselves. Um, now, if we jump out, um, so that was the company side of things, the co-op side of things. I'm going to quickly show you what you might see as a um, as a member. So, um, going back to that original question about having um, two share parcels under different entities, um, the way we we would work it is we would have. Um, have you linked to both share parcels, even if it is under, let's say, a trust in an individual's name, two different parcels, and you'd be able to track them right here. So this might be um, a trust, and then this might be under an individual. So you'd be able to jump into each of those um, as you pleased, where you'd be able to track that individual um, parcel, um, even if it was under two different entity structures. So if we come into Mary Coleman, she is a member of a co-op. Uh, first thing that we see, of course, is this info tile, um, as I mentioned, right front and centre. Um, from the dashboard perspective, each individual member will get an overview of their shareholdings, so they can see uh, what share classes they hold. Um, so Mary, as an example, she has ordinary shares um, and investor shares, uh, and she also gets a total share count. She can then come down and she can see uh, any additional information which is held against her, so uh, the grower member number, which we touched on before. Now, if Mary was part of an ESOP, so this is probably more of an internal um, employee um, capability, they would then be able to jump in and, and track this as well. Going a little bit deeper, um, Mary can come in and she can take a look at the, those same bits of information here. She can come down and track her own individual uh, transaction history. So she can see any time that shares have been issued, transferred or cancelled. Um, equally, she does have the ability to download a statement of holding. This is something we get really good feedback on. Um, so each individual member can download a statement of holding, which in effect is a share certificate. So um, they do like to have that. Um, if Mary was part of an ESOP, I'm not sure if any of um, any of the co-ops which are listening today do have an ESOP, but if you do, please get in touch. Um, they would be able to jump into, let's say, um, their phantom share pool, where they can track um, you know, the, the number of shares which have been allocated, the share price, um, whether those those shares are vested or unvested, and of course, um, any upcoming vesting schedules. Really great tool, something that we've seen um, more and more established companies implementing as a way to not only um, retain key staff, but also to attract really top talent as well. Um, it's a great tool to be able to align um, company goals and objectives. So. Um, if you're thinking of thinking about implementing one, please do get in touch. We we can help. Uh, for the communication side of things, look, this is where you would um, you would jump in as a member to be able to access things like quarterly reports. So, if we have a look at this one here. Um, obviously, this is fictitious, and we have the orchestra team here. Um, I'm not in that photo, but um, this is kind of what it would look like. And then you can see that there are, in fact, documents held against that communication too. 
Moving on to the documents, if a co-op decided that they wanted to share things such as constitutions and shareholders agreements with, uh, with their members, this is where they would be able to access um, those documents. They can download them um, if they needed to. Additionally, each individual uh, member uh, that uses orchestra, they are given their own document folder. So if they wanted to hold things such as that share certificate, as an example, in their own folder, they can do that. Conversely, if a, an admin wanted to drop an individual document, um, let's say uh, a, share to, uh, a, um, a dividend statement into an individual member's uh, folder, they can do that too. Um, and then for the custom fields, this is, um, this is really just where a member would enter in the information that you've requested of them. So um, really straightforward. Uh, I, would, I would punch in my bank account number, update it, and it would feed back through to uh, the company or cooperative. So that's that's orchestra really. Um, just before I stop sharing my screen, was was there anyone that wanted to um, to take a closer look at at, at anything else? I'm I'm happy to um, to dig a little bit deeper if you think that would be relevant. I'll just keep an eye out, Kegan, if anything comes through. No, that's cool. All right. So just. Um opening up the floor for any Q&A. So if anyone's got any questions, um, just either use the chat function or the Q&A function, or if you'd like to ask in person, um, raise your hand and um, I can unmute you. So you can ask Keegan directly. So I'll just um, give everyone a couple of moments to consider anything that they might want to discuss. Perfect. And just while people are thinking about that, I guess, um, what I really like about what you're proposing here with regards to orchestra is the fact that it's an opportunity to improve accuracy. As you say, you know, different people leave organisations and um, it's very challenging to keep that um, information up to date. And then obviously the re piece around reduced re uh, duplication and then the um, piece around keeping it simple. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are all absolutely key. I was, um, I was having a conversation earlier this week with a gentleman. Um, he looked after the side of the business for his company. They had a, a quite quite a large history. Um, and he said to me, he said, look, it's gotten to the point where I can no longer delegate um, any, any of uh, the responsibilities of this role because I'm the only one that understands it. So I mm. sort of said to him, well, what happens if you go on um, annual leave and he kind of went a little bit red and he said oh, well nothing happens <laughs> so or orchestra is a way for multiple people to be able to be over this side of the business yeah. um i've got a couple of questions uh roger all i can see of yours is hi keegan so if you can just send me the rest of what you'd like to ask uh and john de Bernardo has asked can you share more than documents i.e video or can you that be linked to another location Yes, is, is the answer to that. We had an example of this um, yesterday. So the, the, document, um, the documents which you can uh, share, um, the size is 250 megabytes. So um, a short video is fine. Um, what I would suggest is um, sharing a link um, where, where each individual member can click the link and, and be um, diverted to that, to, that, um, to that video at a third party, whether that's Vimeo or YouTube. Um, 250 megabytes is the um, is is the largest file that we can hold. Great. Okay. Um, Rogers, come back with what is the maximum amount of members that can be uploaded into the company's website? Can this be uploaded by CSV um, file? It's a very good question, Roger, and it brings me to uh, quite a relevant point, which I may have glossed over. So. Part of the service of Orchestra is we do all of the onboarding to begin with. So uh, we take all of your data, the more the better. Um, it usually takes about 15 minutes of your time to collate that data and send it across to us. We take it, um, we analyze it, we audit it, um, and then we, we format that data and upload it into Orchestra for you. So um, we do tend to underplay that service. It is huge um, and it can take us quite a while, um, particularly if there are errors within the data. Um, but if anything else, it's a, it's a good excuse to audit the data you do have. Um, so um, the, the second question, the, the, largest, um, the largest number of shareholders for one entity that we have on orchestra is three and a half thousand. Um, I think we can push that out. 
um, pretty easily, but that's the largest that we have at the moment. Right. Um, Janet's uh, asked if she can, um, she's raised her hand, so I'll just um, put you, unmute you, Janet, so you can speak now. Thank you, and thanks for that, that view. Uh, it looks really good. Just coming back to my original question, we have, I mean, we're a health organisation, so we have practices and GPs. They're both shareholders. So the GP is part of a practice and they're linked, but a practice itself entity can be a shareholder. So how we could say that a practice has got a, a set of say five shareholders, mm. but two are owned by the practice, three are owned by individual GPs. So how we manage that. And so we need to link all that together. And they also have what we've called a share standard so that as a practice, they must own, say this one has got five, but they should own six. So we mm. need to hold that information as well to say that they should have six, but currently they only own five. So it's yeah. linking all of that information together. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the direct parties would um, would be the functionality that we could use um, for for the for the first component, where there was um, a practice and then GPs underneath that practice. That's mm -hmm. relatively easy to do. Um, it might take a little bit of work to begin with, but rest assured, we would do that work. Yeah. <laughs> now. The second, the second component about holding um, information against individual share parcels. Again, this is something that we could do quite easily through our notes function. Um, may not be um, quite as automated to begin with as, as you might hope, but um, if let's say a, a practice held five shares and they were supposed to hold six, that's something that we could enter in against them very easily. And that would be, um, accessible either by you as the admin or by them as the um, as, as the shareholder. That would be up to you. Great. Oh, that sounds good. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Um, now, I'm just um, aware that one of the things that we discussed last time we spoke, Keegan, was people will always be interested to know what the cost of the service is. So, sure. um, you know, it's, it, it, it looks pretty... Um, snazzy but what what are, what are the people looking at yeah yeah well it is a good question so the first thing that i would say is that um if you if you're a member of new zealand cooperative you do um you do get our sort of basement level pricing um so that works out to be two dollars per member per month so we charge um per member so let's say a uh a co-op has 50 members um then it's going to be a hundred dollars a month now we do cap that at 100. So even if you've got three and a half thousand um, members as part of your cooperative, we're not gonna be charging you seven grand a month. That just doesn't make sense. So the maximum charge per month is only ever going to be $200. So that's that's sort of the way that it's, it's structured. Um, as I say, we do the onboarding and auditive data to begin with, um, depending on how complicated or complex the history is. Um, there may be a small onboarding fee, um, but from what we've seen, most of it's it's usually pr pretty straightforward. And that is that is a really big service. And as I say, I do underplay it a little bit, but the team here at Orchestra has dealt with hundreds of chair registers and um, what we've found is Unfortunately, probably around 80% um, of com companies are in fact uncompliant. Um, and so what we do is we fix up that data to begin with. So it's sort of a, a set and forget solution. Um, and so you, you are sort of starting from scratch in, in some sense. Um, we also throw in the company's office annual return as a freebie as well, just as, <laughs> just as a nice little added extra. It's usually, I think, $52. So um, nothing major, but you get that um, as part of the package. Um, John uh, has asked the question, what's the typical implementation time? Very much dependent. Um, so uh, again, I'm, I'm quite, I've, I've spoken to the team over at Primo Walcott who are happy with, um, for me to share these details. Um, now they, um, as, I, as I've touched on, they have 900 and something members, I think from memory, um, 11 different share classes, 50 years of um, transactional history. They issue shares quarterly. Uh, they issue dividends quarterly. They issue shares biannually. 
um, and they had a very large amount of data. Um, we're talking around 3,000 transactions uh, per year. So um, it took us a little bit longer than we would usually like. Um, and we, you know, we've managed to get that down to about six weeks. So that's that's one extreme. Um, usually, in most cases, it's going to be within a fortnight. That's great. That's that's pretty fast turnaround time for the most solving part, the yeah. problems. Of course, um, there there are outliers, um, yeah. as you would expect. I'm sure. Uh, is there any other questions from anyone before we wrap up? While we've got Keegan online. Or if you'd like to raise your hand, please do. Okay, it looks like we're um, you, you've covered everything off, which is fantastic. Keegan, any final words before um, we tidy things up and close the session? Yeah, there, there is. I think what I would say is if you are considering implementing a system like Orchestra, not necessarily our software, but maybe even someone else's, I would encourage you to do so. Um, there's no such thing as getting this side of the business sorted too soon. What we've found that is that um, in the event that a, a cooperative or company is audited, um, you know, it's all hands on deck and you wish you had it done this five years ago. Um, once it's done, it's done. And um, it's, it's one less um, stress that you have to worry about. Equally, um, I know that particularly for cooperatives who have um, typically large large numbers of members. So this is a great tool to be able to engage those members, um, a great tool for you to be able to keep them closer to your chest um, and, and save yourself a little bit of time as well, um, you know, and, and having to manually um, reach out to individual members. So I'd probably leave it at that. And, and um, yeah, look, if you do have any questions that you don't want to um, ask today or you think of anything later, in the week. Um, I'm sure Ros will share my details uh, with you all. So um, feel free to reach out independently. I'm more than happy to have a chat. That's great. Thanks so much, Keegan. Really appreciate your time. And um, yeah, I think your point about keeping your shareholders close is absolutely key. And I was saying to Keegan before we kicked off the session that I'd be contacted probably by one or two individuals and groups wanting to establish co-ops. So I think if you, they can get this up right up front, it makes life so much easier than trying to retrofit it um, subsequently. But based on what you're saying, it doesn't sound like it's too hard to do it that way either. So um, you really appreciate your insights and knowledge. And um, we will share Keegan's details um, with everyone who's attended today's session. Um, and as I've always say, you know, love to have people participate in the Cooperative Business New Zealand membership uh, group. So please do encourage everyone to get in contact. And as you are all aware, uh, it's really lovely to see such a wide range of industries participating in conversations today. You know, the top 30 cooperatives here in New Zealand, as has been confirmed by the recent PwC report, generate 13% of New Zealand's GDP. So you are a massive contributor to New Zealand's economy and um, really fundamental to the um, where we're going in the future. So kia kaha everyone, and thanks for joining us.